<laughs> I'm sorry I had to. Okay. Um, and also when that was loading, it reminded this uh, trip down memory lane reminded me of how much I miss Picto Chat on the DS. But anyway, uh, the me channel. I already went through all my me's on uh, my Wii Sports Resort LP. So if you want to go back and look at that, then you could go see that. I wish I could show you in an annotation, but that's unfortunately also in the dust now. Thanks to YouTube, you're a jerk. Wii Shop channel. We'll get to that in the end. We menu manual, which I think was only in the Wii U version. They added this little thing. And when I was talking about how like I had a a branding problem because of the Wii U and whatnot when setting this up. When I was like going back and forth between the Wii and Wii U thing just to set everything up and see that internet was connected all that jazz. I went to the Wii U thing because I was going to go back to it and just start the video. I clicked on that and I clicked Wii menu thinking it said Wii U menu but then it just took me out. I was like wait what? And I was like oh wait I just took myself back to the Wii menu and I just misread it because the names are too similar. So yeah even in the end I still have um there's still trouble being caused with the Wii U's name. Uh, the Zelda Skyward Sword update thing. I don't know if I need this still, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'm pretty sure if you get it on the Wii U side of things, on the Wii U eShop, then the update is uh, integrated in there, so you don't need to have this. But those of you who don't know, back in the old days, there was an error in Skyward Sword that made it so the game became unplayable or unbeatable. It was like something that made the plot progress would disappear from the game and it was just gone for good. You would have to delete your save file and start over. But then they added this update thing, like it had to update an entire, make an entire channel for it because the Wii didn't have DLC or patches or anything like that. So they had to do a channel to make it happen, which was really weird. The Wii system transfer, oh my god, anyone who's done this knows how amazing it is. I don't, I don't know what, well, I'm not sure what will happen if I press start, but I don't really want to mess with that right now. It was incredible, as you see a bunch of Pikmin are carrying things over. If you transferred your data from like a DSi over to 3DS or from one 3DS to another or from a Wii to a Wii U, you were in for a treat. I'll see if I can find footage of it on the on the stinking uh, YouTube or whatever. Yay! But basically, a bunch of Pikmin would be walking through this factory and would be picking up icons of all your save data and it was your specific save data. You would see all of your games and like you would know what data they were transferring and they would be taking it from Wii to Wii U. It was so stinking cool, and it made like the two hour waiting process all that worth it, because it was just cool to look at that and like go on a trip down memory lane and be like, oh, I remember that game. Oh, I love that game. Oh, I hate that game. Oh, that save data. Oh, this Pikmin stuff is so cool. Like, it's just the little things, Nintendo. I know I'm like in the min minority in that sense, because everyone's all about the quick stuff and stuff being just like on the go and super quick and taking things in little bits, so people don't really care about the layout of things all that much, but my god, I adored this, and I think a lot of other people did too. I, I certainly didn't hear anyone who complained about the layout of a, of a Wii or a Wii U. It's like all the different TVs and everything, I was just like, kind of like a video store, or like Walmart or whatever, how there's all these different TVs that show you different things. Oh my god, I sing and love the Wii and Wii U. Um, what else do we got? We got the Wii U menu, we just go there. Uh, I guess before we go to the Wii Shop channel, I just want to show you everything that I currently have. And then we'll end things off in the Wii Shop channel. But yeah, on the SD card, unfortunately, I can't have everything, uh, the spacing. I can't have the channels on the Wii itself because it's just too much data. So don't have enough room for it. But it's on the SD card, so it's easy to access. Uh, I don't really know what order this is all in. Like, it was sort of a random order. Then it turned into order when I purchased them. Eh, whatever. So just go through all of them. I'm not going like, to click on all of them. So you would always hear the... I love that sound, but whatever. Uh, Kirby 64. I'm actually not that much of a fan of this game. Of course, uh, anyone who's friends with me and Yoshi Gamer Girl knows the the memes behind Adeline's a girl. But um, I'm not super crazy about this game, but I got it, I guess. Mario 64, uh, whatever. Actually, um, this is probably going to be the only time I could mention this because back during my... Uh, if I could find it. Uh, oh, Super Mario RPG. Back during my Super Mario RPG Let's Play, the first episode, I started on the Wii menu, and I'm all like, oh, hey, guys, welcome to my next Let's Play. I'm going to do everyone's favorite game, Mario 64. And then I was like, oh, her, not really. I'm never going to Let's Play that game. Originally, I was planning it to be where anytime I would Let's Play a Wii game or a GameCube game or, like, a virtual console game, anything that required me to... Uh, be on the Wii U and like have this menu up I would always make a gag that would start with me being like hey I'm gonna let's play Mario 64 today's the day and I'd be like nah not really and then my like right at the end of my LP career I would actually let's play Super Mario 64 
I never continued this gag after Super Mario RPG though, which was my second Let's Play. Mainly because when I, uh, as time progressed, I always made like the videos a lot more professional looking and tried to make, take it a bit more seriously. And I would always start the first episode in the game itself rather than on the menu starting it up and whatnot. So it was just like a lot cleaner that way. And I sort of came to the conclusion that I don't really want to let's play Super Mario 64. So the gag wouldn't have amounted to anything in the end. So uh, that's just like a little behind the scenes secret of something that I had planned, but just never really came to be. Maybe I'll let's play 64 one day, but at this point in time, I'm not planning on it. I actually announced a while back that Mario Party 3 was my last Nintendo 64 LP, and unless something changes later down the line, if I fall in love with a certain Nintendo 64 game, or if I just uh, find a new one that I haven't heard about before, maybe it'll happen. But for now, uh, we're done with this console. Paper Mario, of course, a beloved game by many. I adore this game so stinking much, and having it on the virtual console... Like, having all three Paper Mario games, all the three good ones, on one console, it's stinking amazing that that was a thing, and it was just another reason why I love the Wii. Mario RPG, of course, you always gotta have that, it's stinking amazing. Donkey Kong, uh, just, uh, classic, I guess, but whatever. Super Mario Bros, just, like, kind of niche things, whatever. Pokemon Snap, adore this thing, it's my favorite Nintendo 64 game, gotta have that. Donkey Kong Country, which is kind of awkward because I'm pretty sure the Donkey Kong Country games got taken off of the Wii Shop channel prematurely. I don't know why that is, but uh, I think that's the case. I don't think you can get them anymore. Uh, but for Donkey Kong Country, this is actually a gift from Chris and Christian from Criss Cross Media. When they did their first ever Let's Play of Donkey Kong Country back in the day, um, they, they held a contest to uh, win some Donkey Kong related games, and I actually won that contest. Uh, so it was a gift from them that I got this game, and this is the copy I did the Let's Play with. So that's a cool little memory, and it's also cool that I have this and I can't get it ever again on other- on the Wii Shop channel, like it's just gone and whatnot, so it's cool that I got it when I still had the chance. Also, um, with the Donkey Kong Country re-releases, uh, they edited the sprite for Dixie Con, so she no longer has the Rareware logo on her beret. Uh, just cause Nintendo and Rare are no longer buddies, unfortunately, so they couldn't use that design anymore. But whatever, just a minor detail. Mario Party 2, the only game that- the only Mario Party game that came on Virtual Console. I know that they couldn't do the first one because of the control stick spinning controversy, but I was always confused why it was just 2, why 3 never made it out here as well, but... As soon as this came out on Virtual Console, everyone and their mother would not shut up about how much they love Mario Party 2. Like, I never heard anyone talk about Mario Party 2 before this came out on Virtual Console. But like, as soon as this one did, everyone was like, Two's the best of the best with Mario Party, it's my childhood. <laughs> like, I never heard anyone talk about 2 before until Virtual Console. And because of that, it became like one of my least favorites, just because I was so sick of seeing it, I was sick of the music, sick of looking at it. I was just stinking annoyed of anything related to Mario Party 2. Uh, Ice Climbers, but those of you who were on my channel back in the old days, I actually had update videos where I would always play Ice Climber and I would just talk about like random stuff that was going on my, in my life. Uh, I stopped doing those and I was considering bringing it back. We're like, I can't say right now because I haven't released that LP yet, but there's going to be a Let's Play coming out in the future, uh, not too far off, where I'm not sure how it's going to end. It's a, it's a game that could go on forever, but I'm going to try and like make it either an update series or like something special or weird. But I was gonna make it so like I would before I do that update uh series LP, I would have to finish this one first. So I would do like a full let's play of Ice Climber, and I was gonna try and get like a second player in, but I don't know who it was gonna be. I'm not sure if I'll do this yet, if I could like shoehorn it into the other one, like how I did Mario Party 4 and Mario Land it making it one LP, even though they're very different games. This won't be an extreme stretch though if I combined Ice Climber with this other game, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Smash Bros. on N64, I thought that was a really big deal when that uh, got released, and I'm very happy that I actually have it. So, again, like, the first three Smash Bros. games on one console, so that's... And if you transfer it over to the Wii U, then you have uh, three other Smash Bros. games on one console. You don't have Melee anymore, but you have Smash 4. So, that's another really cool thing that I just thought was amazing. Uh, Kirby's Adventure... <laughs> Yoshi's Story... I, I actually really like this game, it's just really cute and whatnot, but I can see why people don't, aren't super jazzed about it. Super Mario Kart, I just got it for the heck of ha for the sake of having it because I wanted to have all the Mario Kart games. Uh, Majora's Mask, I like this game. I actually got in a bit of trouble recently because I sort of announced on Twitter that I'm not crazy about the Zelda series. I don't know, I love Zelda Majora's, Majora's Mask 
story-wise. I love watching people play, but I don't like playing it myself, but I still have it because why the heck not? I think I have Ocarina of Time in here somewhere later down the line, but again, I don't really like that game. Uh, Punch-Out, I just got it for the heck of it because I kind of wanted it. It was more so because of, it was before Smash 4 was a thing, so I got it because of Video Games Awesome or Awesome Video Games because I love their Punch-Out series so much it made me want to play the game. Uh, Chrono Trigger uh, and Secret of Mana. I always saw these games like kind of similar to one another. Are they both made by Square? Oh yeah, they are. So uh, these are just two legendary RPGs that I feel like everyone should have and everyone else feels like people should have them and play them. I have not played more than five minutes of either of these games, so I guess I'm not really a good spokesperson for that. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic and Knuckles. I'm not crazy about 2D Sonic, but I don't know, I just sort of wanted to have it for the sake of having it. And I had like a Sonic Genesis collection on GameCube back in the day, but I don't have that disc anymore. And I remember just really liking Sonic and Knuckles just because Knuckles was my favorite character back then. But yeah, just sort of got this for the heck of it. I know that like on the, the old days, like Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles combined in some way, if like you put the cartridges on top of each other. Did they have cartridges back then or? I don't even know because like I never had a Genesis. So, like did they use cartridges or were they all discs? I don't remember. But, like there was some way you combine the games and like I was wondering if you have them both on your Wii Virtual Console, could you still do that? I think you can. I'm not an expert on that. I'll have to look it up. If I could get Teresa to sum it all up, then I'll have her do it, but I'm not entirely sure. Good morning. The Ace Attorney Trilogy. Of course, this gets re-released on every console nowadays, so it's not all that special, but... Oh my god. Playing these games for the first time is an experience I'll never forget, and an experience that I really wish I could replicate or could have reserved for YouTube, but... It's, oh my god, I stinking adore these games. I fell in love with this franchise so stinking much. And being able to, um, kind of the something I don't like about the Wii Shop channel is that you can only, uh, buy, like, everything's bought in points. And you can't really do custom points. You can't, like, have the credit card fill in the remaining amount for how much you need to pay for it. it you have to buy, like, a set amount of points. It's either 1000 which costs $10, 2000 which is 20 uh, 3000 which is 30 and then 5000 which is 50 uh, all the Ace Attorney games cost a thousand points, so ten bucks each. But for uh, the first game, there was a DLC case which was added into the DS version because, believe it or not, these games were all in the GBA originally. I know a lot of people don't tend to think that, but uh, yeah, they were all in GBA and then got ported to DS and then onto WiiWare. But the first game had an extra case that got added into the DS version, but it became DLC and WiiWare version. It cost a hundred points. But you couldn't buy just 100 points, you would have to buy 1,000, so you'd have to spend another $10 just to get that extra case. But honestly, that extra case is, to this day, my favorite case in the Ace Attorney franchise. Not only that, but it is the same exact length as the entire game prior to it. The, that one case is just as long as the first four cases that come before in this game, so... I say it's 10 bucks well spent because it is an absolute joy to play. And, oh my singing god, it just makes me so sad that the Ace Attorney franchise has fallen so downhill these days, but... And also considering how, like, the newer games, or the newest one, Spirit of Justice, it makes you pay, like, four or eight dollars for the stinking Asinine Attorney DLC cases, which is literally just a 30-minute theater show, which is just a joke case that has no point whatsoever to it, but it's just funny to see these characters in a joke case, and they make you pay money for that. It is horrible, considering that this was DLC back in the day, and then they make that DLC that you have to pay for, like, almost just as much money. I will gladly pay $20 for just this one game and all the cases within it. Oh my god, those of you who are sort of new to my channel, you might actually be wondering why I don't Let's Play Phoenix Wright games, why I love them so much. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney was my fifth Let's Play, believe it or not. It is a very old one, but I still consider it to be one of my better projects, considering that uh, the end of case 4 and 5 are actually fully voice acted. Uh, but those of you who were with me way back in the day know that that led to videos being released very slowly, because it's a lot of stinking text. But like, just seeing these this screen right here, it's kind of it gives me chills, because I know that I want to return to it one day. One day, I will let's play Justice For All and Trials and Tribulations. It's been so long in the making, but now that I finally let's play a Professor Layton game, I have no excuse. It's all a matter of when I want to do it. Soon. I promise. Cave Story. Uh, those of you who saw my Cave Story let's play know that I, uh, I originally got this copy 
My first version of Cave Story was Cave Story 3D for the 3DS, and I was planning on Let's Playing that one for the LP, but I couldn't record 3DS games at the time, so I wound up buying this one specifically so I would be able to Let's Play one day. And then the Switch became a thing, and it got a new shinier version, so I got that one instead, and... Oh boy, it's really singing annoying, but that's them the breaks, I guess. Uh, Mario Kart 64, just sort of wanted it for the sake of having it. Same with Mario Tennis, Mario Golf. Uh, Double Dragon, again, I got it mainly because of awesome video games, because I love that episode so sneaking much, so... Uh, kudos to them for making me get interested in a lot of retro games. And here are all the Mega Man games. I've never really been a fan of Mega Man, and they're really singing hard, so I haven't beaten or played any of them. I played Mega Man 1. I actually recorded um, myself playing Mega Man 1 in the middle of the night, and I was just like super groggy and tired, but I don't know, I just thought it would be funny if I recorded myself experiencing Mega Man for the first time. It was a, a couple years back. I spent like two hours on Rockman stage or whatever. Or Guts, I think it was Gutsman actually. Yeah, Rockman is Mega Man in Japan, my bad. Um, I spent like two hours on Gutsman, took forever and I could not beat it. And then I, I eventually beat it and then I was like, I went to Cutman. I was just like, nah, this is stupid. I'm out of here. Uh, but yeah, I never released it because I just thought it was a stupid recording. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I sort of have them just for the sake of having them. Uh, Kirby Superstar, again, just sort of have it for the sake of having it. Uh, Star Fox 64, I'm not crazy about this game, honestly. It was another thing I just sort of got it for the heck of it. Um, I know a lot of people really adore this game, but I'm not one of those people, unfortunately. The Puyus, of course. It's weird because the three Puyus games have two uh, animals set to them, have two different animals each, and they're considered three separate games. But on the PS3, there are only two Puyu games, and each of them has three animals set to them. So it's kind of weird that they split it up like that, I don't know. I think I would have saved money if I went on the PS3, but I got it on Wii because reasons, I guess. Lucky me. Frobot, which is a game that I got because of one of my uh, good friends and favorite YouTubers, Nintendo LP, also known as All Jacey Awkward, also known as Chillax. Uh, he lets play this game on his original channel. Unfortunately, that LP is gone, so uh, you can no longer see it. But I got it because of him. I want to stream this one day just to show it to people because it's really stinking weird. Basically, you're a robot with an afro, and you have like eight girlfriends, and you gotta save all of them. It's kind of like just a indie puzzle game, but the writing is really stinking hilarious. So. Um, that's really cool and whatnot. Uh, Star Tropics. Uh, it's a very beloved NES game that unfortunately doesn't get all that much, uh, sunshine or limelight nowadays. Uh, it was just, like, kind of a niche little game that I wanted to have. I haven't played it personally still, but, uh, maybe I'll get to it one day. It is on the NES Classic as well, if you have that. Um, something kind of cool about it, though, is that it originally came with a letter, uh, along with, like, if you bought it on the NES way back in the day, it came with a physical letter that... Uh, plays a role in the game's story and like at some point in the game it asks you to check that letter and like decipher the code within it or whatever and if you were to get the letter wet you'll see that a secret code actually appears on the paper and it's required to beat the game so you would wonder how would they be able to release this on virtual console without uh, this letter if you uh, go into it's like the I don't know if I want to boot this up eh, sure we'll try it Oh no, I forgot about the launching thing. Uh, it's an NES game, so it's quick. It's actually quicker than a Wii U loading screen. But yeah, as I was saying, if you go into the operations guide, and then you go into, I think the story, you see a letter right here, you click on it, and here's the letter that was included, like as a physical letter when it was released on NES. And it shows you uh, a bucket of water dipping into it, and you see the code. And that is just incredibly cool. So maybe that Sonic 3 and Sonic Knuckles uh, collaboration thing does work because like they put so much effort into making this part of the game or part of the virtual console release as well. So that's really cool. But I don't know. I don't know how they do this on NES Classic. I haven't uh, opened up my NES Classic yet actually. But um, hopefully they include this thing because it is required to beat the game. But it's just such a cool little thing that like they want the extra mile to do. I don't know how they advertise it exactly, but... um. It's here, I guess. Uh, but now that's taken care of, let's go to back to the Wii menu. And uh, where were we? Uh, Link to the Past. Don't like it. Ocarina of Time. Don't like it. Grill off with Ultra Hand. This is a game that was available. I think you could have gotten it on the Wii Shop channel in general, but I 
it was also a reward that you could purchase on Club Nintendo. It was just like 80 coins. It was always on there. So I was just like, eh, why the heck? No, I'll just get it because Club Nintendo's shutting down. So it's going to be my only chance. Chance. I haven't played it yet, but it's one of those niche little games. Uh, the Ultra Hand is actually a toy that Nintendo used to sell back in the day when it was a toy company before a video game company. Uh, but yeah, it's just a cool little piece of Nintendo history. Doc Lewis's Punch-Out! is a Club Nintendo exclusive game. It's basically just a demo of Punch-Out! Wii where you play as Little Mac and you can only fight Doc Lewis. I did a one episode Let's Play of this for April Fools way back in the day for year three. And it was amazing. I stink and love this game. Even though I'm really terrible at punch out, just being able to have a bunch of Doc Lewis lines is amazing. So I'm very glad I have this. Uh, Max and the Magic Marker demo and Pokemon Rumble demo. This was when the Wii Shop channel no longer made it so you could add points to it. And I just sort of downloaded these because I kind of wanted to have them. I'm never really going to play the games in full, so I was kind of okay with just having the demos of them. Max and the Magic Marker is, uh, again, a game that I got introduced to from uh, Nintendo LP. He played... Like, he was part of a, some sort of collab channel, like, it was sort of like Ninbuzz, and I'm sure you haven't heard that name in a hot minute, but, like, it was some other channel, I'll have it pop up on screen if I could find the video if it's still up there. Good morning! And he basically just popped up on the channel to advertise this game, and he played the demo of it. It's kind of like Okami, as weird as that sounds, but like a 2D Okami, you, you're a kid with a magic marker, and you use your marker to create platforms and, uh, items and weapons and whatnot to, uh, get through each level. Uh, those of you... Uh, might rec some of you might recognize this character or just the name of it uh, because it's a bit more well-known nowadays because a while back, I think in E3 2016, 17, they, you saw like during the PlayStation conference or the Xbox conference, there was a game with a similar name called like Max and the Cursed Book and the Sacred Pages or something like that. I'll have a pop-up on screen again. I'm sorry, I'm not prepared for this. But like it was a sequel slash remake of it um, with like the same character in the game, but like it was a lot more dark and gritty looking. That's for sure. It was like it looked vastly different from this one. This was super cutesy looking, but it was just kind of cool. I saw that pop up because I actually recognized that character. It wasn't just like a new thing that a lot of people thought it was. It was a new. It was a recreation of this WiiWare game, which I thought was really cool. And Pokemon Rumble. I've never got into Pokemon Ranch or Pokemon Rumble, but I uh, got the demo of it. I just played a little bit of it. it was it was fun, I guess it was kind of cool and cutesy, but I never really wanted to play more than the initial demo, so I just sort of have it for like memory's sake. <sighs> but yeah, that is about it. That's all I got for uh, the Wii Shop channel. Or is it? Also, I love this song, and it's sad that it's going away soon. Well, I guess the channel will still be up here, but we can just never access it again.